12. After this, when it became known in the city and the region round about what sentence had been uttered against our rabbi by the messengers and deputies of the Sanhedrin, then many of those who had followed after our rabbi withdrew from him, and many souls which he had made in Gedera and bet Zeida and Migdal and other cities fell away from him. And many rich women who had contributed to our treasury ceased to do so and returned to their homes, and only such were left as had not whither to go and clung to him. And when I, Judah Ishkiriot, beheld the poor folk that were left in the house and yard of Simon Barjona, my heart failed within me, for I, Judah Ishkiriot, was entrusted with the belt of the monies of the treasury, and when the wealthy had withdrawn from the rabbi, the treasury began to empty, and I thought in my heart, What will be now? Who will now feed these poor? For until now it had been thus with the feeding of the poor. Yochanah, the wife of Cusa, the rich officer of Herod, and Susanna, the young woman, the two souls which the rabbi had made in Naim, came of wealthy homes and had many possessions, and they sold of their possessions one by one and added the money to the treasury of the poor, as the rabbi had commanded them. And thus did others of the wealthy that came to the rabbi, for otherwise the rabbi would not take them into his congregation of souls. With these monies we bought bread and other food, and we fed the poor which were always assembled about the rabbi. But now, having heard of the sentence uttered by the court, there came the husband of Yochanah, and would have compelled her to return home. There came likewise Zadok, the rich father of Susanna, And these two women, refusing to leave the rabbi, they were disinherited. And with the woman, Miriam of Migdal, the matter was thus. Save on the one day when she appeared first before our rabbi, in the city of Naim, she had been wont to wear sackcloth. Bar Talmai, the blind oil mixer, who had been of the disciples of Yochanan the Baptist, had taught her to walk in his ways, and to practice fastings and mortifications of the flesh for the sins she had committed, that she might repent and be cleansed. But our rabbi had taught her that she need not mortify her body, nor wear sackcloth in order to repent and be purified, for, he said, God looketh into the heart of man, and not upon his clothes. Also the glory of God descended not, save through joy. And the true repentance wear the sackcloth upon their flesh, but above that they put on silk and purple, and anoint themselves with sweet-smelling oils, that it may not be known of men that they fast and mortify themselves. And it came about that Miriam of Migdal changed her clothing before long, and she anointed her body once more with oils, and wore silken clothes of many colors, and likewise many ornaments, whenever she appeared before the rabbi. And she, rather than the other women, tended the rabbi, washing his raiment, and sewing for him shirts of fine linen, to which she gave a sweet odor with costly perfumes. These she had brought with her, and they hung about her neck in precious vials. Now all the other women had given their possessions into our treasury, some having even cut off their hair and sold it to the wig-makers and beard-braiders, that they might bring contributions to the treasury. But she did not thus, though many poor could have been fed from the sale of her possessions. Moreover, the other women labored in house and court, at the spinning wheel and the washing, to minister to the needs of the many poor and of the disciples. But Miriam of the city of Migdal bestowed care upon her hands, that they might not become unsightly, and that she might think them fitting to tend the rabbi. For she said that she had dedicated her soul and her body as a pure offering to the rabbi, and inasmuch as her hands were deemed worthy to touch the feet of her lord, it were wrong that they be made coarse with heavy labor. Thus she worked not about the house like the other women, save that she ministered in the booth of the rabbi on the roof of the house, and kept it with great cleanliness, and adorned it with many flowers of the field, and with sweet-smelling herbs, which she knew how to find. 
and she brought into his couch sweet-smelling spices and oils from the Phoenician vials, whereof she had many. Now, when the rabbi returned daily from his holy work, it was as though he had taken upon himself all the sicknesses and fears, the pains and sorrows of those that he had healed, and he was weary, and his body seemed to break under the burden, and his face was pale with sorrow. And then Miriam of Migdal would enter into his room, and she would wash his feet and anoint them, and dry them with her hair, and the rabbi suffered her to do so. And sometimes the spirit would descend upon her, and she would fall to the earth, and she would have foam upon her lips, and she would deliver herself of messages and tidings, and prophecy spoke from her, out of her love and devotion to the rabbi. And the other women envied her for her nearness to the rabbi, and there was quarrelling among them that she did no labour about the house, but dedicated herself to the rabbi, and clad herself in coloured raiment and ornaments. And there were women who had contributed to the treasury, but had withdrawn, saying, Now let Miriam sell her precious oils and feed the poor. And for this reason, too, our treasury became smaller, and our congregation lost in number." Now the house of Simon's mother-in-law was filled with such of the poor as had no homes, and with the sick that could not betake themselves elsewhere, and with the heavy laden of sin. And they lay in the court, like to heaps of refuse which are thrown out of the house, and some of them wandered about the city, and begged bread. And the people of the city murmured against our rabbi, saying, He hath called the people unto himself, and he cannot help them any more. Surely his power hath departed from him. Likewise the poor said, Where are the paths whereof ye told us? Why helpeth he us not? Are our hopes deceived again? For now it came about that the rabbi closed himself in his booth on the roof, and concealed himself, and would see no one. Then Simon entered to him and said, The poor are assembled in the courtyard below, and they wait for thy salvation. What shall I do with them? And the rabbi answered, I would be alone with you for a little space. Come, let us go from here, for I am weary of them. There is a ruin in the neighborhood of the city of bet Zeida. Let us go there and hide ourselves from the multitude, which crieth ever, Give, give, and we will prepare our hearts for our Father in heaven.'"